Every year, millions of people come to the UK and they go out looking for what they think of as traditional English food. And where better to get that food, they think, than a traditional English pub. Big mistake. Unless, of course, you want scampi, frozen pies and sausages with God knows what kind of meat inside them. Now, if you're comparing English food to, say, fine French cuisine or maybe some Japanese sushi, then, of course, it doesn't have the finesse that those cuisines have. But it has something different. It has that unique ability to make you feel good inside. It's comfort food. And nothing embodies those qualities better than a traditional shepherd's pie. For the ultimate smooth and creamy mash, I've got a couple of really good tips for you. Now, firstly, people would normally cook their potatoes in some boiling water. But the trouble is, that makes the potatoes really soggy. Now, what I do is stick them in the oven first. And once they're out of the oven, you just want to cut them in half. And then we're going to spoon out our potato into a strainer like this, a metal strainer, and you'll see why in a second. So these are really, really hot, so be careful with your hands. Right, once you spoon out the last of the potato into your sieve, this is where the hard work really begins. Now what you want to do is push the potato through the sieve into a bowl with the back of the spoon. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because it makes the smoothest, creamiest mashed potato. Now obviously, the easy way to make mashed potato is to boil the potatoes until you can put a knife through them. Then you can drain them off and you can just use a potato masher. There's no problem doing that at all and it'll taste pretty good, but it won't be as smooth and creamy as this. So, it's worth the effort. Right, next thing we're going to do is put some hot whole milk into it as well. A bit of a dribble in there. And I'm going to put some butter in it. And I'm going to season it really well with some salt. A few good grinds there, some black pepper, like so, and then I'm just going to mix it up. And that is basically done, oh, and it's amazing. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm going to put a few ingredients in the shepherd's pie which aren't exactly what you'd think of as traditional, but keep with me till the end, you'll see exactly what I do, because it's going to taste amazing. First thing I'm going to use is some pochini mushrooms, which I need to soak first in some nearly boiling water. I'm just going to leave that on the side whilst we cook up some carrots, some onions and some garlic. So just put that into your frying pan, where it's sizzling away already. And then we just want to cook this down in a frying pan on medium heat and just make them nice and soft. We don't want to brown them off though. Right, now that you've cooked down your onions and your carrots, next thing you want to do is add in a couple of good handfuls of butter and mushrooms. And then I'm going to put a bit of thyme in it, a couple of sprigs. And the way to get this off is just to push your finger from the bottom all the way up to the top. And it comes off just like that. Give it a stir, and then just cook those mushrooms down. Right, now the veggies are cooked down, I'm just going to stick them in this bowl on the side. Because the next thing I'm going to do is cook my meat. Now obviously it's a shepherd's pie, and what do shepherds eat? They eat sheep, so we're going to have lamb. But if you were going to have a cottage pie, you'd have beef bit of olive oil in the pan like that and then I've got 500 grams of lamb mince here. Now I just need to break it up in the pan. And we just want to brown it off to take all of that rawness out of it as well. Right, I'm just going to season it with a bit of salt. Bit of pepper. And while it's browning off, I'm just going to take out my porcini mushrooms, which have been soaking now for about 10 minutes. Nice and soft. Right, so now the meat's cooked and we've got that rawness out of it, I'm going to add some 
my solar wine into it. And then our porcini mushrooms, which I'm going to chop up. These smell absolutely intoxicating. They've got a real woody, natural smell to them, and they'll add a real richness to the sauce. So that's them, chopped. Add them into the pan as well. Give it a stir. Then we'll put back our vegetables. And this, this is where it starts to get a little bit more quirky. So, funky ingredient number one, ketchup. Really, really good for the flavour. So give it a really good squeeze, like that. Funky ingredient number two, baked beans. Couldn't get more traditional than baked beans. Might seem a bit weird, but uh, other recipes, they'll use tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, but baked beans, just, it has something else. Trust me, when you have it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Next ingredient, some frozen peas. Check out the colours. Looks absolutely gorgeous. Then, I'm going to season it a little bit more, a bit more salt, a bit more pepper, and then some Worcester sauce. Another great ingredient, really good for seasoning it. Good squirt. And then, give it a stir. And then all you need to do so let it bubble away. Put it on a low heat, leave it there for at least 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. And we're almost there. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot is that we need to put a bit of our mushroom water from the Puccini mushrooms into it. So just put a couple of good gloves, three in there. Okay, it's definitely hot enough, and the seasoning's good as well. So we can make it up now. Okay, and I'm um, gonna put in half our meat into here. And if I wanna keep the rest for another time, I can just freeze it, no problem. And then on top of the meat, we're gonna put a mashed potato, which we made earlier. Now I'm going to put a big blob of it, come check this out, into the middle. And then we're just going to spread it to the sides. Now it matches this creamy. If you want to be really pretentious about it, you could call it pomme mousseline, but I just call it creamy match. Now spread it all to the sides. And once you've covered the meat, which I will have done with another spoonful, Like so. See, check it out. Doesn't need to be too delicate. Then, the next thing I'm going to do is grate some cheese over it. Now, I have got some mature cheddar, which is perfect for it. Absolutely perfect. It's exactly what you want. And once you've covered all of it with a really thick layer of cheese, Then we're just going to stick it under a really hot grill for a couple of minutes until it's browned off. The best thing about this dish is that you don't even need to have it with anything. It's got everything you want right inside it. And to serve it, what you need to do is just stick it into the middle of a nice white plate. Come check this out. Really nice golden colour on top, which is exactly how you want it. And then just put a big, healthy spoonful onto your plate like so. Get a little bit more meat. Sprig of thyme, just to garnish. A little bit of pepper. And there you have it. No nonsense, delicious, traditional shepherd's pie. Just the kind of thing a shepherd wants after he's had a hard day in the field with his sheep.